Hi everyone, it is good to have you here. My name is Dennis Tercero and I'm a STEM ambassador at PCC or Pasadena City College. Today we're gonna to have a chemistry workshop with the title, Stay Safe at Home Doing Chemistry. Pretty cool, right? Before we move on, this workshop will be split into different sections. I will record my voice while I'm doing this presentation, then I'm gonna film myself doing the actual experiment, and also I'm gonna film myself explaining some chemistry concept on a whiteboard later. So. Please bear with me until we do this part. Also, before we move on, you should have a PDF version of this presentation and you should also have a handout with you. If not, uh, please check with the person who got the email with all the information related to this workshop. So this is our agenda for this workshop today. Unfortunately, I won't be able to answer specific questions, but I will try to talk about the most important aspects of chemistry and the experiments that we are gonna do. So we will start with a little icebreaker so you can get to know me and get to know a little about the things that I do at PCC. Then we will start with our first experiment today, which is called pH scale or pH spectrum. We will be making solutions and these solutions are gonna change color, which is pretty cool. After that, we will do our second experiment, which is called making your own lava lamp, which I believe is really cool because you don't have to buy one when you can do one with the help of science. Lastly, I'm gonna conclude this workshop talking about different uh, engineering and chemistry aspects and perhaps later in your life, you decide to study chemistry or engineering, who knows? So I have some questions here that I believe are useful or maybe you can find useful. Uh, as I said before, my name is Dennis Tercero. Uh, I'm studying aerospace engineering and chemistry at PCC. Uh, this is my last semester, sorry, my last year at PCC and hopefully I will be transferring next fall. So what I wanna transfer, and my top options are Stanford, UCLA, UC Berkeley, Irvine, USC, and Cal Poly Pomona. Yeah, I know, <laughs> a lot of schools, right? Uh, why do I like chemistry? Well, that's a really good question. Uh, I got interested in chemistry thanks to my chemistry professor at PCC. Uh, she taught me that chemistry can be a fun subject and you can do a lot of things with chemistry. You have the calculation part, but besides all the calculation, which is sometimes boring, you can do a lot of things with chemistry. Uh, currently, I teach Chem 1A, 1B, and Chemistry 22 at PCC, and I'm doing a research in chemistry at Cal State LA. Uh, what I'm doing during this quarantine? Well, pretty much I've been at home since this started. I don't do a lot of things, but I try to keep my mind busy. I watch a lot of Netflix, Netflix for sure, a lot of anime, I tutor, tutor chemistry, and I sleep a lot, really a lot. What is the best way to spend your time during this situation? Well, definitely staying at home. You might, might feel overwhelmed thanks to all these, but things will get better soon for sure. And then you will be able to hang out with your friends one more time. Well, let me tell you that the first thing that I'm gonna do was all this is done. I'm gonna to go to K-Town for Korean barbecue. Now, let's start talking about chemistry. You might be wondering, what is chemistry? Chemistry is too universal and dynamically changing as a subject to be confined to a fixed definition. It might be better to think of chemistry more as a point of view that places its major focus on the structure and properties of substances that changes <clears throat> and the changes they undergo, sorry. Here we have some signs that we can use to classify a reaction as a chemical reaction. Later, I'm going to explain that there are two types of reactions. We have physical reactions and we have uh, chemical reactions. We have gases produced in a large or small quantities. Change in temperature. This is usually between something really hot and something really cold. Obviously, there are in-betweens, but yeah. The chemicals change color. Usually, it happens abruptly and you're going to see yeah, this during our experiment today, we have explosions. We have the case of light being produced or energy being produced. Usually energy is in form of heat. So things get really hot or cold. So there are two types of reactions in science. We have chemical reactions and we have physical reactions. Chemical reactions are reactions that occur when the essence or the original nature of the substance changes. And we can conclude that a chemical reaction has taken place if, if one of the above happens, the one that I just showed you. 
A physical reaction is a reaction in which the nature of the object that you are studying or the materials doesn't change. For example, uh, let's say that you are breaking an egg, you are cutting paper, you are me melting chocolate, you are vaporizing water or boiling water. All those are physical reactions. Now we have types of chemical reactions because obviously we're focused on chemistry. There are a million different types of chemical reactions. Some of these are really complicated and requires you to understand advanced topics of chemistry. And there are others that are pretty straightforward and don't involve a lot of complicated calculations. The good thing here is that even if you haven't taken a lot of uh, chemistry classes yet, you have made a lot of chemical reactions throughout all your life. Here are some examples of these. So we have combustion. So you have your match there and you have fire. In a combustion reaction, a substance reacts with oxygen. Usually it's from the air, but it doesn't have to be exactly from the air. And this transfer energy to the surroundings as light or heat. Then we have eating. All the food that you eat goes to your stomach and your stomach transforms this into energy thing. Obviously, you, you use this energy daily. That's why you have to eat pretty much every day. Then we have cooking. I cannot cook, sorry. Chemical reactions are useful in cooking and help to improve the taste of food. We start with reactants and we end up with some, with one or more products. And then we have living beings. Your body is a huge machine of chemical reactions taking place every single second. You produce CO2 when you breathe. If you are running or if you're playing soccer, you sweat and you produce heat. And then you consume this energy every single day, as I said before. Now, before performing magic, sorry, before performing science, we need to understand and practice some really important rules that could save your lives. Know the location of your safety equipment. This can include fire, extinguisher, water, and maybe sun in some cases. Leave experiments at home. And when I say home, I mean your chemistry lab. Well, once you start, once you start taking real chemistry classes, you will be dealing with toxic materials that can, can harm you or can harm other people. So the best place to leave those experiments is at school. Uh, you can read all the others, but I think the most important one, and I want to emphasize this, is do not taste chemicals. They might have really cool colors, but please do not taste them. The worst case scenario is that we really don't want this. Now let's start doing science, shall we? Our first experiment is the pH scale. We will, make, we will be making a different solutions, and the solutions are going to change color. Really cool, right? pH is the measure of how acidic or basic water is, pretty much. The typical range goes from 0 to 14, with 7 being the neutral point. However, we can have pH uh, below 0 and above 14. pH of less than 7 indicates acidity, whereas pH of greater volume than 7 indicates a base, the presence of a base. The common mis misunderstanding here is that the up is, is to say that the absolute scale goes from 0 to 14, and that's completely wrong. There are substances that go way below 0. For example, um, let me think about one. Uh, for example, triflic acid. This one has a pKa value of minus 14. So if you had a triflic acid solution with a concentration of one molar, this would be basically a pH of minus 15, which is extremely acidic. Triflic acid, in fact, is a, close to a thousand times stronger than pure sulfuric acid. And that's really crazy. It's one of the strongest acids in the world. Obviously, there are strongest acids than this, but this is just an example. This acid is extremely corrosive, so you don't want to touch that. And prob probably you have never heard about this acid before. And this is understandable. Regular people are not allowed to buy this type of acid. In fact, you need a special license to buy this acid because it is extremely dangerous. So we will use this P pH chart later, the one in the middle, So during our experiments. A pH indicator is a chemical detector for hydroxide, and that's the formula for hy hydroxide. We have OH, that should be minus, sorry. Hydroxide is OH minus, and then we have hydrogen. Hydrogen is H plus. 
pH indicators change color depending on the pH of the solution they come in contact with. We have different type of pH indicators. We're gonna use a red cabbage today, which has a type of a pH indicator. However, there are tons, if not millions of pH indicators. So here are some examples uh, to your right of some things that <clears throat> might be familiar with you. For example, seawater that has a pH of eight, baking soda, we're gonna use that today, has a pH of 9.5. Then we have ammonium solution. You might be able to have that, I'm not pretty sure. Then we have bleach, we have lemon juice, and we have more. You can check that later. So now let's do science, finally. So we're gonna do the red cabbage experiment. Our materials, as you can see on your handout, are we're gonna use a red cabbage, we're gonna use water, we're gonna use some glass cups, around four or five or six, depending on how many solutions you wanna make. And then we're gonna have vinegar, we're gonna have sugar, we're gonna have bleach. You can make a salt solution if you want. You can make a sugar solution. If you have bleach, you can use bleach. If you have alcohol, you can use alcohol. If you have tap, obviously you have tap water, <laughs> you can use tap water and then we're gonna use baking soda. But at least try to have between five and six, so you can see the different spectrum of color. So I'm gonna to move to film myself doing the actual experiment, and then we're gonna continue with the presentation. So during the that video, I'm gonna explain how to do everything, the steps, materials, and all that. So see you there. Hi everyone, so I'm Dennis, finally you can see me. So today we're gonna to be performing two experiments. First, we're gonna do the pH scale or the pH spectrum. And after that, we're gonna do the lava lamp. Uh, as always, safety first. I have my lab coat here, I have sun goggles. Uh, I'm gonna be doing these experiments in my garage. However, you should use your kitchen. Or, well, if your mom lets you use her kitchen, you should use your kitchen and perform these experiments in your kitchen. That's Take some red cabbage and put it in a blender for about two to three minutes until you have a very liquid substance. You should put a lot of pieces so you can have a really concentrated solution. However, later I'm gonna dilute this solution with some water. Red cabbage contains a natural indicator pigment molecule called flavin, and we will use this molecule today. Step two. Pour some water to the pieces of red cabbage that you put into your blender. Add about half a cup of water, and now you can start blending your red cabbage. We want to have a very dense solution here, so if you think you should add more red cabbage to your blender, go for it and add more, because we, we want to have a really concentrated solution. Step 3. Take your solution and now we're gonna filter it to have a more homogeneous solution. If you don't have a strainer like I do, you can use a coffee filter too. Repeat this until you have enough solution to add to your cups. Remember, if you have five cups or even six cups, you have to add that much solution. Remember, we only need half a cup for each cup. Step four. Now we're gonna dilute this solution adding some water. Add about a half a cup of water and then mix. Step five. Pour your red cabbage solution into different cups. Be sure to leave some space for the solutions that are gonna be added. I'm using five cups, but you can have more if you want. Now it is time to test all these different solutions and see how they change color.
Step six. The first solution that I'm gonna prepare is sugar with water. Add about two spoons of sugar to a cup with water. Once you're done, pour this solution in a cup with a red cabbage solution. Now let's prepare some baking soda with water. Let's add about four to five spoons of baking soda to some water. To get the best possible outcome, add the same amount of water that you added to the sugar solution. Now let's use some lemon juice. I'm adding a whole lemon to my solution, but you can add more if you want. The color will be brighter. Now let's add some vinegar. You only have to add a little volume of vinegar because this will react immediately with the red cabbage solution. And finally, let's add some bleach to my solution. Add about the same volume that you added of vinegar. Really cool, right? Let the solution settle for about two minutes and now let's see the magic. So this here is the most acidic solution. This is the second most acidic solution. This here is basically a neutral solution, and this here is a basic solution. But what about this? Shouldn't bleach be a really basic solution? Of course it should, but this here is not only bleach. I added some lemon juice to it, to have something in between of a neutral point and some acidic solution. So this here has a pH of about 5 to 5.5. So we have acids, and on the other hand we have bases. Really cool, right? So that was our first experiment. You were able to see how the natural pH indicator in the red cabbage reacted with the level of acidity or base in our different solutions. You can test different solutions at home for sure. So you can have more colors and therefore you can have a more complete spectrum. But remember, always follow the proper safety rules. Now let's start doing our second experiment. We're gonna do a lava lamp. A lava lamp, or well, some people call it astro lamp, is an ornamental lamp invented in 1973. The lamp consists basically of a bolus of a special color wax mixture inside a glass vessel. The vessel is then placed in a box containing an incandescent light bulb, whose heat causes a temporary reduction in the density and viscosity of the wax. Both density and viscosity, by the way, are characteristics of liquids, and both depend on temperature. In other words, as the temperature of the surrounding increases, and therefore energy is transferred to the solution, the values of density and viscosity increase or decrease. Obviously, this depends on the substance that you are analyzing. 
So these are the materials that we're gonna use for this experiment. We're gonna use vegetable oil, we're gonna use vinegar, water, baking soda, or if, if you don't have baking soda, you can use Alka-Seltzers, food coloring, and one or two cups. If you, you don't wanna use cups, you can use water bottles, that's totally okay. So before I start filming that video of the experiment, it is important to always remember to use the correct equipment to avoid accidents. So let's go. So for this experiment, I'm gonna use this metallic container slash plate because things are gonna get messy here. So I take both cups and I put them on the container. Now I'm gonna proceed to oil, add the vegetable oil to both cups. You should leave anywhere around 35 to 40% of these cups empty because we're gonna add more things later. Now let's take our vinegar and let's add a little of this. You will see that most of the vinegar goes to the bottom of these cups. This is because oil and water do not mix. And basically vinegar is more water than acetic acid. By the way, this is how chemists call vinegar. So now let's mix our solution so we have more bubbles in the vegetable oil later. Now let's prepare a solution of water and baking soda. Add about five to six spoons of baking soda to a cup full with water and mix. So for this part here, I have already added the coloring things. I was not able to buy the food coloring, but I had some natural colorings here at home. Now we're going to add the baking soda solution to both cups. This is so cool, right? Can you see all the bubbles going up and down? Basically, what is happening here is that when baking soda or sodium bicarbonate gets mixed with vinegar, they react to form a lot of CO2 or carbon dioxide which are all the bubbles that you are watching right now. That's a lot of carbon dioxide. For this part here, I prepare a new solution, but this time I'm using vanilla coloring. Let's watch. Really cool, right? Now we have more baking soda. Therefore, we have more carbon dioxide. Can you see all those black bubbles going up and down? So there you have, that's your own DIY love lamp.
For this experiment, you can use a bigger cup. And you can use more baking soda if you want. You will have more bubbles and therefore more carbon dioxide. Obviously, if you use food coloring, you will be able to see more bubbles during the reaction. That's the best way to do this experiment. You can use different colors, maybe mix all of them together. As I said before, if you don't have baking soda, that's okay. You can use alka seltzer, which is an effervescent. Engineering versus chemistry. So you like engineering, but you also like chemistry. So what you should do? Well, I won't be able to answer that question, obviously, because that's a really important life decision that you have to take by your own. But I can give you some ideas about what engineering and chemistry are. Engineering. It focuses more on the developing of machines and different technologies to automate several tasks that usually will take a long time to do. Then we have chemistry. It focuses on the understanding of the behavior and composition of different substances and how these same react in contact with others. This can be used for industrial and medical purposes. So what can you do with a chemistry or engineering degree? Engineering, engineering is an interdisciplinary science. Therefore, it uses concepts and principles from many other scientific fields. However, engineering cannot cover and deal with every single phenomenon in the world. This boundary is reached when chemistry problems are presented. Physics by itself cannot cover or even deal with this field because chemistry by itself is really, really complex. So, why not learn chemistry ensuring this gap? Having an engineering major and maybe a minor in chemistry would open a lot of doors that engineering by itself would not open for you. And this is why I'm studying aerospace engineering and chemistry, because I want to be able to integrate the chemistry aspect to my engineering aspect degree. Thank you, guys. It was really my pleasure to have you here today. Remember, intelligence is the ability to adapt to change. In these extraordinary times of change is when we really can grow as true scientists. Take care and stay safe at home. See you next time.